Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on birds. The objectives for today's lesson will be to uh, figure out the common characteristics that all birds share, how do birds reproduce and develop, and what adaptations have helped birds to fly. Let's discuss the common characteristics of birds. All birds are endotherms. What does that mean? They are warm-blooded animals that can control their body temperature on their own. And they're able to maintain a fairly constant body temperature regardless of whether the, the temperature outside and the weather is cold or hot. Also, birds are an, the only animals in the animal kingdom that have feathers. Feathers are the distinguishing feature or characteristic of all birds. So if you are an animal with feathers, you are characterized as a bird. They also have a four-chambered heart, which is great because that four-chambered heart is a more complex structure, which allows the blood within that, that bird uh, to be separated. So the blood, there's two types. It can have oxygen or it can have no oxygen. So oxygen-filled blood actually um, gets its oxygen from the, the air that the bird is breathing in. And then once that blood goes through the animal's body, it uh, no longer has oxygen and goes back to the heart to pick up more oxygen. All birds uh, produce sexually. And females actually lay amniotic eggs, similar to the reptiles, in that the amniotic egg has everything inside for the embryo, or the small developing organism. This would be the embryo. To develop on its own. It's got its own nutrients already attached to the embryo to help it to grow and develop. And the place where you would find those nutrients are the yolk of the egg, similar to the yolk that you would see in an uh, egg that you bought in the supermarket. It's got the nutrients already inside. It also has uh, what we call albumin or amniotic, um, or this is actually a protein to help the embryo to grow, and it's got what we call amniotic fluid inside, which is kind of like a cushion to protect the embryo also. This would be, the egg would be filled with this fluid that surrounds the embryo. Now, the eggs um, hatch only after a certain period or incubation period, and that's just the time where the egg is developing, but it has to be in a certain range of temperatures, which is why you'll see the nest with the eggs inside, and you'll see the mom or the dad bird coming in to actually sit on top of that, those eggs, to keep them warm, keep protect them from the outside elements and from predators um, so that they can fully develop before they hatch. Now, birds have something, uh, another structure that they've adapted to help them to fly, and that is, uh, are the hollow bones. Birds have a very strong bony skeleton, but the bones are hollow, and that keeps the overall uh, mass of the bird very light, so that helps with the flight, because if they're too massive, obviously they'll be less likely to be able to fly, at least for very long periods of time. And also they have a very large sternum or breastbone, which co is connected to uh, the muscles of the bird chest. And that's good because those muscles, because birds are able to fly, they have very big, strong muscle, chest muscles. And so they need that, that support from that large breastbone 
to support their muscles. And finally, uh, the birds have different sources of food. Uh, they are sources of food, excuse me, and they also help to control pests such as insects and uh, different things that may get out of hand or, or become overpopulated. And they are great pollinators. They help the flowers and the plants to continue to grow.